Surprise and Shine East Texas. I'm Cynthia McLaughlin. It is now 501. Cynthia, what can you tell us? Trent, the Amber Alert is now in its 22nd hour as FBI agents and local law enforcement intensify their search. Authorities believe she may be with these two people, Austin Walker and Courtney Odom. Freezing weather and frigid air can make even the closest commutes complicated. I'll tell you what essentials around the house can help you combat the cold. According to a new national survey by the Orlando Health, Heart and Vascular Institute, 67% of Americans say they'd be concerned about in person medical appointments when COVID rates are high in the area. Nearly half say they won't reschedule missed appointments until those rates have dropped. It is 28 degrees. You definitely want to bundle up. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four layers on. That's right, Kara. I'm here in downtown Tyler at the Smith County Election Hub. And can I just say what a beautiful day to get out and vote. We really cannot be any luckier. Now these veterans are ready to aim their life in a new direction. It is the season of giving. That's exactly what we're doing here at KTK Studios, our 12th annual Neil's Wheels Bicycle Collection Drive is already underway. But I've got something at home that can help you. Just a normal cooking spray. Watch this. So you just spray it on the rubber of your car, rub that in, leave it overnight, and I promise you will never have that issue again. Continuing coverage on a horrific story from Cherokee County. It involves a girl who claims she shot her dog 10 times and then posted a video of the suffering animal on social media. Law enforcement agencies have now confirmed the dog died from those injuries, and we've chosen not to show the video because it is just too graphic for television. It's now 1148. We have some breaking news for you this morning. A Chapel Hill ISC employee is behind bars for election fraud. You just heard from City of Tyler and Smith County officials regarding the coronavirus in our area, all with a similar message to heed the advice from the CDC. Social distancing, cleanliness, and only making necessary trips. Some critics still have said that Tyson was too slow to react to the virus, which could have led to the outbreaks at many of your plants. Why didn't Tyson act faster to prevent the spread among your workers? workers. Right there, that was Governor Abbott announcing an executive order including no gatherings of 10 or more people, no dining in bars or restaurants, but takeout or drive through is encouraged, no visiting nursing or retirement homes. Now, I'm glad you brought up that those reports of you being seen around the Capitol without wearing a mask. You say you have been wearing one and now you've contracted COVID-19. So do you have anything to respond to those claims or does this change your view on wearing a mask? In with breaking news this half hour as the first positive case of coronavirus in East Texas has been confirmed in Gregg County. Evening us, Governor Abbott just gave us an update on the various preparations for Hurricane Laura. That was just as of 7 this morning. It is forecasted to make landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, or the governor said possibly Category 4 hurricane. He's with more breaking news this half hour, for now's police officer Amber Geiger has been found guilty of murder. Take a listen right here. Well, Silver Star Nation was pretty pumped about the big win over the Eagles last night, but not as pumped as this Texas bride who had two Cowboys players crash her wedding before crashing into the end zone. A Gregg County Sheriff's deputy who has served for 20 years is getting a present that doesn't come with the price tag. KTK Cynthia McLaughlin talked with everyone who came together to make his wish come true this year. Take a look. Tracy Freeman is getting the gift of life this Christmas. Next week, he will receive a new kidney from a total stranger who lives just down the road. I'm a uh, kidney patient. I'm on dialysis right now. I've been on dialysis. It was a year in October. I do my dialysis here at home, and I do it nine and a half hours a day. That's the reality for many people living with chronic kidney disease, waiting for a life-changing donation. Tracy has served his East Texas community for decades. He joined the Gregg County Sheriff's Office in 1999. I adore him, and to know him is to love him. Just everyone loves Tracy. But his time in uniform is not all he's known for. A lot of law enforcement officers do. They work side jobs. I've worked for the Longview Independent School District for several years. I've worked Lobo football games. I've worked one of the middle schools for uh, for 17 years on my days off. His days off look different now. Unfortunately for Tracy, many of his loved ones were medically unqualified to give. Well, there's so many people out here that their family don't qualify to donate. 
I have an older brother and, and two younger sisters. We all we all have diabetes. A similar story for his cousin Angela. She was unable to donate her kidney because of a medication she was taking. I was devastated, and I I told the the don the the advocate. I said, "You don't understand. Uh, Tracy absolutely has to have a kidney. We have to get him a kidney." What else can I do? She still wanted to help. Freeman's doctor suggested she start a Facebook page to spread the word. It's a huge part of my business. I run social media campaigns all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so she was speaking my language. Yeah. When Angela asked me about it, first I was against it. He said, yes, because this is a huge ask. This is, I said, I know, we're asking them to give you life. In August, Angela launched the Facebook page, Tracy Wayne Freeman Needs a Kidney. This is a man that has served as a deputy for years that has protected other people's lives, that has protected our county, you know. Yeah. This post now has more than a thousand shares. The response was overwhelming. I mean, I never thought it was getting like that. People lined up to see if they were a match. Just so many people, you know, from classmates to people in the community, even people from other states had responded to it. The social media idea was a huge success. We have more applications than what we can possibly go through. December 7th, the update, they've been waiting to share. Tracy has a donor and she's the perfect match. Hey, tonight at 10, we continue the story that perhaps you saw just last night, the story of a Gregg County Sheriff's deputy who is getting a life-changing organ donation. Tracy Freeman is getting a kidney from a complete stranger, a 24-year-old woman from White Oak. KETK's Cynthia McLaughlin tonight shares her story and tells us why she felt called to help, saying she felt God was telling her to do it. Take a look. This is Alyssa Matthews. Her donation is meaningful in more ways than one. So when I was 11 months old, my dad, uh, he passed away. He had type 1 diabetes. He was on dialysis for 10 months, and he was waiting for a kidney donation, and he never got one. Eight years ago, Matthews' sister Jessica passed away after she suffered a heart attack. Growing up, she she knew the importance of organ donation, so she wanted to become an organ donor. And so she was able to help 75 people through her uh, donations. Because of my dad and my sister Jessica, um, I was really interested in organ donation. And so I did this research project for a semester over organ donation, and that's when I told God, if, if you ever want me to be a living donor, I would. Getting an organ from a living donor rather than one from someone who died has multiple benefits. Three to five years is the average waiting time for a kidney from a deceased donor. With a living donation, a patient can receive a transplant in less time, like Tracy is, thanks to Alyssa. Also, a living donor kidney can function anywhere between 12 and 20 years. A deceased donor kidney can improve quality of life for just 8 to 12 years on average. The people in Dallas, they told me, since I'm so young, uh, my I'll have my kidney function will be like up to 75%, where the average is about 65%. I shouldn't have to do any more any more treatments. That kidney should bring me back to a, a normal life. Besides, you know, my insulin. This is going to save his life. With this transplant, I told Donna. I said, you know, we're going to get our bedroom back because. You know, there's 30 plus boxes of fluid stacked yeah. up in our in our bedroom. You know, it's like a warehouse in our bedroom or in a bedroom. Alyssa lives up the road from Tracy in White Oak, so Tracy was able to meet his hero ahead of the big day. We went to um, McAllister's in Longview, and so it was him, his wife, my mom, and me. Um, so we just got to share our stories. She's an amazing young lady. She's going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life. Tracy was very excited to um, to be off dialysis, to eat whatever he wants. So, uh, so he got um, it was like a bacon cheese spud or something. He was like, I, I I don't have to watch what I eat anymore. I'm going to be healthy. God's give her a path to go, and she's she's taking that path. The two will be isolated this Christmas, preparing for the operation. But there's one thing Tracy looks forward to most after surgery. For hearing them tell me that Alyssa is safe, that nothing happened, she's in good hands, and she's healthy, 
that's that's my main concern. A community servant forever grateful for the girl who decided to share her spare. Cynthia McLaughlin, KETK News. Question right now with people coming together next week for Thanksgiving. Safety is on most people's mind, especially now that Texas has topped more than 1 million COVID cases. Yeah, while parts of West Texas are seeing a second surge, other areas are doing everything they can to keep businesses open. In tonight's special report, KETK Today anchor Cynthia McLaughlin goes along with a team of East Texas virus fighters to show us how they're keeping our state up and running. At this moment, declaring a state disaster for all counties in the state of Texas. March 13th, the Lone Star State shut down many kinds of businesses, closing stores, restaurants, and offices to contain the spread of coronavirus. Oil price was affected. The rate of jobs coming in were affected. A lot of people had to shut down because they were nervous about it. From the oil fields out west to locally owned East Texas businesses, people were desperate for a solution that sticks. This might look like typical disinfectant spray, but there's much more technology than meets the eye. Uniqueness in our product is not that it kills viruses and bacteria, because like, as you said, Lysol does that, bleach does that. Tab Lawhorn is the co-owner of Guardian Touchless Solutions. This Texas-based company opened when the rest of the state closed. The uniqueness in our product is that once applied through electrostatic means, the bond to the surface can last for at least 30 days. For 30 days, the spray acts as an invisible shield against more than just coronavirus. It has also been proven effective stopping H1N1, chicken pox, black mold. It even gets rid of the smoky smell after a fire. Our technicians go in every single time in full PPE, head to toe, and when he sprays the surfaces with our electrostatic guns, it creates a positive and negative charge with the polymer, so that allows it to bond on the surface and last for as long as it can. Villaggio Del Vino restaurant in Tyler and Harley's and Bridget's boutiques next door are owned by Harley Hooper. These locations have been getting the treatment for months and Hooper has been pleased with the results. We haven't had one COVID uh, victim in our store or our restaurant since we started. Hooper does not require masks in either of his stores. We're not afraid. We are cautious. Now, thanks to the solution, businesses like this one can go back to normal. They don't have to shut down and customers can shop at ease. We are in the customer confidence business. Uh, customers want to know establishments that they go to um, are being treated with the highest scientifically available and monitored disinfecting processes. Many coronavirus guidelines from the CDC have been straightforward. Stay six feet apart, and if you're closer than that, wear a mask. But there's a big difference from a retail store to an oil rig. Keeping your distance is difficult, if not impossible. Gladiator Energy in Midland has seen the impact of the virus firsthand. We've had a couple of guys get it. I mean, that's just the way it's been going when nobody really knows how to stop it yet. An industry our country relies on, unsure of how to safely work during a pandemic. This has been a very hot button issue with them because the spaces that their workers and employees work within are so compact that transmission without using some effective uh, surface disinfection is very risky. So Gladiator Energy took an extra step to protect their workers. And that's where the Guardian stuff came into play for us is take the extra step, you know, make sure our guys are safe. The treatments in the field in the oil and gas sector uh, caught a little flag at first just because anything new, you know, nobody likes change. As we've grown over the past few months, everybody's really accepted what we're doing. Whether a vaccine is available next month or next year, some new habits have been for the best. People will come to expect this type of disinfection. They will actually require it. It would be sort of a shame for it to go away all of a sudden when it's been proven to be very effective. This spray offering a quick fix and a long-term solution. Cynthia McLaughlin, KETK News. Coming off tonight with some breaking news. A missing East Texas teen has been found safe. FBI says she was found in Louisville, Kentucky. Benson County officials do confirm that Austin Walker and Courtney Odom are in custody and will be charged in the case. Now, Sermons is in route right now back to East Texas, even as we speak. KTK Today anchor Cynthia McLaughlin explains how and when Amber Alerts are issued for missing children just like Willow. 
That she's not in trouble and we love her and want her back home. A plea from a family member for 14-year-old Willow Sermons to come home. Willow is a freshman at Grand Saline High School. Very bubbly and outgoing, but, you know, it's, it's hard for her to make friends and stuff because of her disability. She gets teased a lot. Her family members tell us she turned 14 just last week, then went missing early Tuesday morning. My mom had gone out on her back porch and noticed that Willow's window was open, which is like seven foot off the ground. No way that she could get out by herself. An Amber Alert was issued late Wednesday night, leaving many East Texans wondering why it took nearly two days for it to be issued. Everybody's question was, why wasn't, wouldn't this be issued sooner? Well, if you don't have the information to meet the criteria, then the state system, that's why it's in place. There are other things that can be done, and, and there's other investigative tactics that are being done in the meantime. Authorities believe these two people, Austin Walker and Courtney Odom, could be responsible for Willow's disappearance. Walker is believed to be driving a white 2012 Toyota Camry, registered in Odom's name. Public records obtained by KEDK News show the license plate on that Camry is registered to this home in Bullard. We found Willow's social media account. She has multiple on Facebook and on one of them, Austin Walker is listed as one of her recently added Facebook friends. Relatives say Willow told a friend Walker was coming to get her the night she went missing. That's one of the things even at the center we see a lot of child um, to child disclosures, um, which they tell their friends because they're not comfortable telling an adult. Rubith Renteria is the director of community education at the Children's Advocacy Center in Smith County. She says parents should be especially vigilant in monitoring their children's social media accounts, especially with more time at home. We lock our doors at night to protect our family and to protect our children. So why are we doing those same, safe, those same safeguards with our electronic devices? As the Van Zant County Sheriff's Office investigates, with the assistance of several other agencies, what authorities need more than anything is your help. Amber Alerts, I would say that the only way that they are successful is when the public responds. All with a common goal, to bring a child home safe. Cynthia McLaughlin, KETK News. And of course, this is a developing news story, and we're still learning more information every minute now about the details in this case. As we learn more, we'll update you on our website. That will be KETK.com. This morning, special report. More children under four years old die from drowning than any other cause. And with all the water here in East Texas, from backyard pools to large lakes, there is a huge risk that parents should always be aware of. One Kilgore family thought they were doing everything in order to keep their kids out of harm's way. But tragedy still struck. This morning, we take a look at the remarkable recovery of one brave little boy who was proving doctors wrong. That's in our Fox 51 News exclusive. This is Lincoln Walden, an active, adventurous three-year-old. Video taken just before this joyful little boy's life would forever change. On June 15th, 2019. His mom got a call she never expected. The only thing she could get out was it's Lincoln. And I asked, you know, what what was going on. You know, she couldn't say anything. Um, she and finally I just broke down. I said, is he alive? And she said, I don't know. Lincoln had been found in this pool next door to his grandparents house in Hallsville. Doctors think he was in the water for as long as 20 minutes. A teenager pulled his lifeless body out before first responders arrived. And, you know, I did my assessment on him. Uh, he was not alive. Uh, he did not have a perfusing heartbeat. EMTs and paramedics were willing to try anything in that ambulance. A full grown man just beat basically, you know, pushing as hard as he can on my kid's chest to try to get him to breathe again. Um, but I'm so thankful he did that. He got him to spit up all the water. I did perform chest compressions. Um, I did do them harder than I normally would have on somebody his age. Finally, a pulse. 
Lincoln brought back to life. A miracle, but doctors still had doubts. They weren't sure if he was going to make it, honestly. They said that it was one of the, some of the most severe brain damage that they had seen. The difficult diagnosis. Little Lincoln would never walk, talk, or eat again. After hospitals across the state refused to accept him, Dell Children's in Austin finally opened their doors. That's when everything started to change. That's where Lincoln had to relearn everything. Breathing on his own. Standing on his own two feet. Taking his first steps there using a go. special wheelchair. Little by little, that's all that matters. Every therapist he had was just in shock and they said that they were so excited to go to work every single day because they were ready to see, you know, what Lincoln was going to do the next day. September 5th, almost three months after the accident, Lincoln was discharged from Dell. Doctors and nurses who'd become like family, cheering his amazing accomplishment. And his progress continued beyond those hospital walls. We were home for two days and he started walking on his own completely. His second first words, mom. That was the best thing ever. You know, it's just really just a miracle, really. There is still a long road ahead. His feeding tube recently removed and Lincoln still needs multiple medications every day. Life is still hard, um, don't get me wrong. I miss hearing him talk to me, you know, having all those conversations. Yeah, I miss that a lot. <laughs> Mainly, I love you. That's, I love you, Mom. <laughs> I know he'll say it again, though. Kim Utley teaches a class called Infant Swim Resource, or ISR, in Tyler. Each lesson is 10 minutes long and involves lots of tears. Jennifer had heard about ISR but didn't know just how important it would be until the accident changed her son's life forever. Not even just paying for the lessons but driving every single day to Tyler, you know, and to be here for a 10 minute class, I was like, that's crazy. I was like, he's fine. Nothing's going to, you know, it's not going to happen to us. And then the next thing I know, it happened to us. Drowning is the number one cause of accidental death in children one to four years old. It's the number two cause of death in kids under 14. Kim teaches infants as young as six months old. Once a child's mobile, they can get themselves into trouble. And if they can do that, they can roll on their back and float and survive that situation if an accident were to happen. She says parents typically teach their children to associate water with fun activities. Parents are, they're getting their kids in the water at a really young age and strapping a flotation device on them and teaching them to jump in and have fun, but they're not teaching them what to do when they don't have that device on. Lessons like this are especially important because layers of protection around around water don't always work. They had the doors locked to the house. He managed to get out two doors, unlock them, open them, walk out, shut them behind him and go out to the pool gate where he opened the pool and went and we are beginning to get more awareness, which is great, but we need even more. Lincoln and his sister Layla started classes at the beginning of the year. He can actually float all by himself now. Lincoln continuing to do the things doctors said were impossible. God is just blessed us beyond measure and has healed him in so many ways, in ways that I never expected. And I just am so blessed to be able to be here every day and to hang out with him all the time when he shouldn't even be here at all. A truly remarkable recovery documented every step of the way by a family forever grateful. Now, some of the therapy Lincoln is in now isn't covered by insurance. Oxygen therapy alone costs thousands of dollars, but it has been helping Lincoln tremendously. So to help with those costs, Jennifer has created a GoFundMe page. You can find a link to that page on our website, EastTexasMatters.com. Just look for this story. Remarkable recovery. Thank you for that amazing story, Cynthia. Good job right there.